Hey guys, Nick here with another video. So I recently got a comment on one of my more popular videos about removing oil spots from the driveway. Uh, and looking back at that video, that's a pretty terrible video and a terrible representation of what's actually going on. Anyway, somebody commented that oil does not react with baking soda. And while that's true, the baking soda does do something to the oil, much like soap does something to oil. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys something today that I think is kind of cool. It's kind of a fun experiment to show. I mean, it's you see this a lot in schools and different things, but you know, even at nearly 30 years old, I still think this is a fun experiment. So I have three bottles here. I filled them most of the way with water and then a little bit with oil. And you can see the oil just kind of floats on top of the water. And if you give it a little shake, you can see the droplets of oil disperse into the water a little bit. And you can see some of them just kind of floating around in there. But they always rise back up to the top, and they don't mix in very well with the water. Oil is not miscible or soluble or dissolvable in water. And so what we often do to try and mix up oil and water, or at least cut grease or things like dish soap and other things try to do, is we try to turn the oil water mixture into an emulsion, which what that basically does is it makes the droplets of oil very, very small so that they can float around more easily in the water, so that really so that the water can get between the droplets of oil and the surface on which the droplets of oil are stuck. And that's how soaps and other things clean greases. Uh, if you add something like sodium hydroxide or like drain cleaner, like you would have seen in my most popular video, that actually reacts with the oil and starts to break down the fats in the oil, and it essentially converts it to soap. Although used motor oil does not make a soap that I would wash my body with. Anyway, this experiment is going to compare the results of mixing baking soda in this bottle, which I haven't done yet, but I'm going to add it, dish soap in this bottle, and then nothing in this bottle. It's a very simple experiment. All I'm going to do is add the ingredient, shake up the bottle, and see how well the oil mixes. And if it's taking a while, we'll get a cool time lapse of what it looks like when the mixture is settling. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is the baking soda. And I just have a paper towel with a bunch of baking soda on it because that's the easiest way to add it into the bottle. The other benefit of baking soda on a driveway is that it's fairly absorbent, which you can see here. And on top of that, it's also mildly abrasive, so you can use it to scrub. So this is in no way like a competition to see which method is the best, it's really just an observation of what's happening. Okay, there's our baking soda added. Put our cap on. Wipe off the baking soda that spilled on the outside. And you don't have to use motor oil for this experiment. You can use cooking oil which is much safer and less environmentally harmful. But I'm using motor oil because this is what's most frequently on my driveway. So that's kind of the analysis I'm trying to do. So for our other bottle here, I'm gonna add oh, a fair amount of dish soap. Wow, and you can see immediately in the bottle, the dish soap breaks the surface tension and has made a hole in the top of the oil the oil layer see no hole in this one and I mean it's a good thick layer of oil so it's really breaking the surface tension but I can see it's gradually starting to close which makes me wonder how long the soap can hold this effect all right so now we have our three bottles again the baking soda is on the left you can actually see the baking soda has sunk to the bottom taking a little bit of oil with it because it is quite absorbent but you can see another really cool effect is if you disturb 
the oil that's on the bottom, the baking soda releases it and it floats back to the top. Okay, so we're gonna give them a shake just in the same order that I added the ingredients. Baking soda first, shake it up. That should mix up the baking soda and the oil together. And now we have our emulsion. Give it a few more good shakes. Okay, so now we have a nice, ugly, cloudy mixture. We're going to do the same thing with our dish soap and oil mixture. And this is going to get very soapy and, you know, sudsy. Which is another reason to kind of let it settle so that the suds can dissipate and you can actually see the emulsion. All right, and then now for our water mixture. Okay, so we now have an emulsion of oil in three containers, and I can see that the water is already starting to settle out. But let's go ahead and switch over to our time lapse. Okay, well that was really unexpected. So, the baking soda, we'll start with the most unique first. You can see that instead of the oil rising to the surface, it's actually begun sinking to the bottom. My guess is that the clumps of baking soda or sodium bicarbonate are actually sticking to and absorbing some of the oil and dragging it down to the bottom. So we sort of have a little bit of like lava lamp action going on here, it looks like, where the oil, if, if there's more oil on a clump of baking soda, then it rises to the surface. But if enough clumps of baking soda come together, they fall back down to the bottom. That's very interesting. I haven't looked at the time lapse yet, but I'm excited to see what that looks like. And then the soap, as we sort of expected, is still an emulsion with a very thin layer on top, but if you look at that thin layer, it's discolored because it's still an emulsion of the oil and the soap. So if we disturbed it again, it would fly right back into almost a solution. And then of course the water, which happened almost immediately, rose back to the surface and you can see only where the, the ribbing is in this bottle. You can see that some stuck to the side of the bottle, but that's not really sinking oil, that's just sticking oil. Uh, and you can see the water is slightly discolored. That's more than likely just some impurities that were in the oil because this is used motor oil, which I thought would give the best, you know, contrast for the video. Uh, so that's really interesting. So what I think I'm going to do in my next video of oil spot removal is I'm going to combine the baking soda and the dish soap together and see what effect that has. Uh, that's that should provide, you know, some interesting results. Hopefully, uh, it'll be better results, and I'm definitely going to use a bigger brush. Um, oh, last thing I want to mention, I know I, I said this is not very environmentally friendly. Used motor oil is certainly not very environmentally friendly. Almost every single auto parts store that sells oil will accept used oil, even if it is contaminated with a little bit of water. So they'll accept oil and used automatic transmission fluid. So I'm going to have no problem putting this stuff back into my oil jug and taking it to my auto parts store or to one of the local auto repair shops or something like that. So I don't want anybody to worry. I'm not dumping it down my drain. I'm not dumping it out in my yard. Um, people who do that either don't know any better or just don't care at all. So anyway, I'm very close to an auto parts store, so it's going to be no big deal for me to just throw it in my truck and get it taken care of the responsible way where it will get filtered and hopefully made back into either synthetic or some sort of blended oil to be used again. Anyway, these are some interesting results. I'm kind of kind of impressed, a little bit surprised at the uh, 
baking soda results especially, but uh, hopefully you guys are too. Uh, if you knew about this already or knew better than me, go ahead and post that down in the comments. Uh, if you would, if you like this video, leave a like on the video. It really helps out a lot for some reason. Uh, if you like this type of content or the other content on my channel, please give me a subscribe. Uh, it's what helps keep this channel alive. And I'm working on some ways where people can make donations and whatever else, or not donations, but support the channel by spending real money. Uh, I was going to use Patreon, but I don't think I'm going to do that now. I think I'm going to just use YouTube's built-in thing. Just trying to figure out that whole interface and see how I can make it so that the people who spend some money can actually get some control over the content of the videos. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next one.